So for the plugins, um, actually I'll show you the difference here first. So this is without any gain change and without any processing. Run, out, run my gun. All the other kids with their pumped up keys. You better run, better run faster than my bullet. All the other kids with their pumped up keys. You better run, better run, out, run my gun. All the other kids with their pumped up keys. You better run, better run. And with So it is louder. Uh, I think it sounds better. And I'll just I'll walk through all the different plugins here. <clears throat> First in the chain, I'll shut all these other ones off. Is the stereo spreader. Uh, this one's called enhancer. Uh, this one just gives it a little bit of spatial depth and a little bit more. Um, cohesion with what's right down the center and what's hard panned left and hard panned right and I'll show you the difference as well it's quite subtle I think you can mostly hear it like in the shakers the shakers just seem a little bit more uh, I'm not even sure how to call it but I think it sounds a little bit better you don't want to crank it too much because then it'll start to sound actually kind of in the reverse a little bit more mono-ish like it'll just make the make everything sound weird I'll show you. So this is cranked. It just kind of makes it sound weird. Uh, so next in line is the multiband compressor. Uh, the one that I like to use, but I unfortunately don't have, is uh, Waves Linear Phase Multiband. That one is a very transparent, uh, and you have a lot of control over all the different parameters so it works really good for mastering I don't have that one so I'm just using the uh, the Cubase stock plugin here works pretty good so basically you want to control the peaks on all these different frequency bands and what you can do and what I always do is first I narrow down you can solo what you're listening for And then you just change the range. So what I do is I try to control those really low peaks, set a ratio and a threshold and an attack and release so that it's about as transparent as you can get. But at the same time, controlling those peaks. Because if there's a lot going on, like if you have a lot of drums, uh, a lot of instruments as well as singing you want to control all of your peaks and transients and all that stuff in a nice sort of flattering way a way that will flatter the song itself um, so you might want to emphasize the vocals more which would be somewhere in the mid to mid high range you would compress that a little bit less turn up maybe the volume maybe a little bit more uh, and make sure that the attack is not coming too soon to chop it up that kind of thing here I basically just went through all the different presets found one that sounded about the best then I tweaked it 
so that it was as transparent as possible. Um. I think basically this allows you can hear all the instruments and they're not peaking uh, crazily like if there was a like I said if there was a ton of instruments you'd really want to have something like this to control all the different uh, the different frequency uh, peaks and stuff going on Next up is the SSL style compressor. Um, this one provides um, a little bit of dynamic range control and it also shapes your transients um, in kind of one cohesive uh, way. So that's kind of what gives it a little bit of a glue effect. It makes the song sound like one, one full unit rather than a bunch of different sounding channels squashed together um, I'm also putting about 4 dB on this I think that was part of the preset um, but yeah I'll, uh, I'll run through it here So, as you can tell, it's a little bit louder. Sweet. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to get too deep into what a compressor does. Um, but here on the mastering process, again, you kind of want to be transparent, um, at least to some extent. And so what I do is I, I set the attack nice and high so that your transients are still coming through. So it's not going to do too much except just shape it so that each transient that's coming through will be shaped the same. And that's kind of what gives it that sort of glue uh, aspect to it. And also the ratio, you don't want to crank it too high because then it'll sound too squashed. It'll ruin the dynamic dynamics of the song. Four, I think, worked for this song. And release, same thing. Basically, if the song has a nice steady pump or like a steady kick or something then you can set it to what you want how it kind of sounds best auto I think was just fine for this song um, and I'll show you as well the dynamic range between the quiet parts and the loud parts and that's affected by the threshold so here's the quiet part and here's the loud part And if you set the threshold down, you could see the, uh, the the quiet part is getting like 8 dB reduction just about. And then the loud part. They have the same loudness and I don't like that at all. So you want to keep your dynamic range between the song and ascend again like have it so that it flatters the song if you know whatever way you want it this way I want it to have a nice dynamic range a quiet part when it starts building up and building up I want it to be a little bit louder have a little bit more impact and I think it was about plus plus four or five or something like that that where it's still you still get that volume jump. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it about this compressor. Uh, next in line, I use, this is the Native Instruments Passive EQ. And this has like a, 
a tube character to it as well as the EQ. Um, and each each boost and cut and stuff, you see like six. It's actually going to be fairly transparent. Like if you crank it, you'll you'll hear the difference for sure. But it has that sort of transparent character, and that's why it's the uh, they even sort of uh, they say that it's good for mastering stuff, and it it is quite nice. It also has the uh, mid side. You can use that for different applications. Um, I'll show you the difference without. So yeah, I gave, I put, uh, actually, you know, yeah, I went to the same thing, went through the different presets, whichever one sounded best, I kept, and then I just tweaked it to be a little bit more transparent. Uh, the low end was kind of, kind of lacking a little bit, so I just left it kind of high there. Uh, I cut around this area, I think maybe 270 would work best, I'm not sure. Kids with Either way, uh, that's kind of where some of the mud happens. Probably about 180 to 390, somewhere in there. Um, so you kind of want to cut that a little bit. And then the highs I left sort of high. This one I cranked down. It gave it a little bit more clarity. Especially in the vocals and the uh, the hand drums. So I left that at this setting. And as well, I put a high pass on, only on 22, because I don't want to cut out too much. Like there's still a fair amount of guitar low end that's coming through and I want to keep that. But anything below 22 is just taking up headroom and it's not giving anything to the song. So I. I uh, I put that on. Um, this here, I, I don't use this on the mastering process, but uh, I'll just, I wanted to show the difference. This EQ is nice for the mastering because it has that sort of transparent quality. Like I said, if you crank these, you'll definitely hear a lot of stuff going on. And aside from the tube aspect, like the tube, um, tube emulation of this does give it that non-transparency but that's kind of what i wanted to add to the song uh, in the first place but any other normal eq will have um quite a bit you'll, like you'll notice it'll really cut through the song and it'll it'll it won't give it that transparent quality and actually the best eq i found for this kind of thing is the uh, Waves Linear Phase EQ. Uh, not only does it have the linear aspect, but it's also nice because it has that transparent quality and you can really fine tune it. Um, and some people like to put the EQ before the compressor. Um, I like to do it after because everything, the sound actually sort of changes with, especially here, the the multiband, it changes the relationship between the different frequencies. So I'll control my dynamics between those frequencies and then I'll shape the song as it is with the compressor. And then I'll just fine tweak the EQ just to give it A, the tube part of this processing, like the emulation, as well as the uh, frequencies. Just change the frequencies a little bit. Um, so yeah, and uh, next I use... Oh, actually, first. Um, yeah, some people use it before. But also, if you put it before the compressor, um, let's say you put six here on the low end. If it's after the compressor, essentially it'll be like boosting six but if you put it before the compressor 
it can and oftentimes it does um emphasize it more so it'll be more like you're putting like eight um i think it's because of how it's changing the dynamic range any little bit bit that you tweak on the eq will be more noticeable um coming through the output um so yeah and then next up i put a tape emulation so i have a tube emulation and then i have a tape emulation and the tape same thing it gives that sort of saturation um that a lot of people sort of seek everybody's seeking that kind of a sound and i think it works really nice um it also acts a little bit as a limiter but it's not my final limiting process i think this one oh yeah this all right here we go Okay, so yeah, it is cranked full. But yeah, so it's kind of acting as a limiter, and it's also giving that saturation. I'll show you without and then with. So this basically when when stuff starts coming through like your transients like your drums and stuff when it's kissing the limit it has a nice saturation um, I like to do that right before the limiting that way it's not affecting any of your EQing all that EQing has already been dealt with and your compression and everything and then I go to the limiting process and in this case I'm using the maximizer um basically because it has this soft clipped uh built into it and because it doesn't have the release like i'm not too worried about tweaking the release to find detail or anything i just want to get as loud as i can without affecting the dynamics of the song so um i'll just show you the difference here so let's see the quiet part out his mouth he's a cowboy kid yeah found a six shooter gun in his dad's closet hidden with a box of fun so nice loudness going on there same thing about the same loudness um And most mastering, you'll see they'll do either a minus 0.3 gain limit or a uh, minus 0.1 uh, dB limit, sorry. And that's just to make sure that your um, all your peaks and everything won't go past uh, zero once it's all processed and being played on machinery. I like to do minus 0.3 because a lot of the times... Um, songs and everything gets transferred into mp3 format and a lot of times it's less like 128 bit quality and the worse quality you go the more chances it will reach above zero and that affects the sound quality even more so if you drop it down a little bit more than 0 0.01 then you're sort of guaranteeing yourself a little bit more uh, room for that whatever happens there and the the soft clipping um what that does is it's kind of like like a valve or a tube simulation um i'm not gonna really get into much detail but it's kind of like a distortion except it instead of running the waveform up past zero and cutting it off like a square right at the zero db mark it actually rounds it out a little bit more so that's what gives it a little bit kind of like a tube uh character to it so that's why i choose the uh the maximizer with the soft soft clip built into it and again this one i don't want much more than one never more than two gain reduction uh db of gain reduction because 
again, it'll just affect the dynamics of the song. I'll show you. Hanging out his mouth. He's a cowboy kid. Yeah, found a six shooter gun. So there it's getting louder, but once you get to the loud part. They're a little bit too similar, and I want to keep that dynamic, so I don't I don't want to go much more than that. And another thing is when these high peaks come in, I'll show you when it's cranked. That <laughs> kind of ruins the whole uh, point of that peak itself. So when you turn it down, it still it keeps the dynamic. You still have the impact when you don't crank it so high. And yeah, so something like 1 to about 2 dB gain reduction is probably a sweet spot. Okay, so that's that's all the processing.